Hola, comrades! Today's topic of interest, Harvest Moon. This is not a series that is talked about often these days. There is a good reason for this, and it is simply that this franchise has not been good in a very, very long time. I'm not going to defend the later games in the franchise, save for the Rune Factory spin-off entries, which are heavily flawed, but if nothing else, quite interesting. Combining the repetitive format of Harvest Moon with traditional hack-and-slash RPG gameplay lends a grounded naturalism to otherwise cliché, save-the-world JRPG stories. They're certainly better than the cutesy nonsense that came to dominate the series on the DS. Somewhere down the line, the developers mistakenly decided that the heart of the series is the farming itself. But it's not. The Golden Age of the series, which I'm going to define as being from the original Harvest Moon to 2003's A Wonderful Life on the GameCube and PS2, understood that the central appeal of these games is the repetition, is the steady, relaxing process of attempting the same tasks and reaching toward the same objectives day after day, and eventually, gradually, reaching them. It's satisfying and soothing at the same time. This is largely an Eastern idea, as opposed to the capricious, passionate individualism that has dominated the Western mythos, but that does not mean there's no appeal of farming to the average Westerner. The ideal of self-sufficiency, of growing one's own food and chartering one's own life without dependence on a cruel and arcane wage system, has persisted since the Industrial Revolution, and in an age when a majority of people worldwide live in cities, it's not hard to see the widespread appeal. The creator of Stardew Valley, a delightful and popular Harvest Moon-esque game that has become what the series forgot how to be, is in fact an American. To understand why Harvest Moon in its golden age, as well as Stardew Valley, work so well, we have to understand why repetition matters in video games, because it does in fact matter. Yes, repetitive is often used as a pejorative, but it does not have to be. Great art has been using repetition for thousands of years, from the days of the ancient Greeks and Romans, or even before that, to draw parallels or emphasize themes or details. Novelists from Hemingway to Toni Morrison wrote with this in mind, and it has also slipped into gaming. Life is Strange and Final Fantasy X use it well, while Skyward Sword uses it in a different and controversial, but still effective, way that I should and probably will talk about in a future episode. But that's not what I'm discussing here. Harvest Moon makes use of mechanical repetition. There's a straightforward, prosaic allure to routine, especially when the routine cannot be disrupted by outside forces. That was a major draw to games from the beginning, back before there was any story behind them. In a world of chaos, games offered us a sensible order, and the best Harvest Moon games take comfort in this. What we typically conceive of as relaxation is passive relaxation. This is lounging on the beach, soaking up rays while raising an ice-cold margarita to your lips. But there's another kind of relaxation. Active relaxation. This is unwinding by performing a repetitive, soothing task that does not take intense rumination. Harvest Moon offers a perfect example of the second variety of relaxation. Consuming other art forms is an act of accepting and analyzing what is not your own. When you're reading a book, the words on the page were not written by you, and you are thus forced to reconcile them with your idea of yourself. It's not so much a matter of what the words mean in the context of the story, but what they, as well as the story as a whole, mean to you. That's what it's about. That's the point. You have to actively read to the end of the page to find out the next step of these characters' lives and how the world around them will shift. 
With film, there is not the necessity for the viewer to actively push themselves to consume the media in question, but outside ideas and concepts are still dousing them, and they have to consume not only words, but sounds and images, and the arrangement of those sounds and images. There is no experience more transformative, more all-encompassing, more visceral than a cinematic experience. Now, video games can do this. They can throw cascades of outside information at the player and require the player to react to it, and more story-driven games do this proudly and without apology. But in games where the focus is more on the player experience, you have the ultimate control. When you're reading a book, you can't suddenly decide that you want to spend more time in the romantic subplot, but if you're playing a Zelda game, and you want to stop before you reach the final dungeon and spend another 20 hours traipsing around the wilderness for no story-related reason, you can. But more than player control, there's this implicit belief in player reassurance. There's this simple, mechanical joy to the idea that if you push the control stick up, your character runs forward, and if you push the A button, your character jumps, or whatnot. There's this direct correlation between input and output that does not exist in any other medium. Harvest Moon is far from the first series to tap into how repetition can be effective, but it was the first major franchise to realize that you don't need much else. Animal Crossing followed in Harvest Moon's footsteps, but that series is fundamentally about building a community, whereas Harvest Moon is a more isolated affair. There is indeed interaction with the outside community, but the focus is on the player, and their farm, and their family. The question is, how do you keep a game like this, which is so heavily based on repetition, from becoming completely boring and tedious? The answer is to give the player goals to work toward. This can be as simple as to challenge them to make it to the next level, but Harvest Moon, with its soothing atmosphere and colorful, likable characters, aims higher. The player starts with a bare minimum to start a farm, and has to build from that into a successful business, buying seeds and animals and nurturing them, then collecting milk and cheese from the cows and harvesting the crops in the fall, and then selling those commodities to make money. There's nothing flashy or ostentatious about it. And th that is precisely why it is so effective. That mechanical repetition, given purpose by the concept of working to construct a profitable farm by one's own means and one's own hands, is not only pleasurable, but it taps directly into the central appeal of the agrarian ideal. The modern world is arcane and uncaring. One's inputs can have nothing to do with their outputs. There are those who risk everything and get nothing, and there are those who risk nothing and get everything. But Harvest Moon establishes parity. The monotonous work you put in is rewarded with the satisfaction of having built something all your own. What could be more pleasurable than that? This might be the quickest script I have ever written. Some of these I work on for days on end, exhausting myself in an effort to make everything just exactly right. But that wasn't the case for this script. I started work on it one night, only committed an hour to it, and got halfway through. Then I picked it up the next morning and completed it before breakfast. Sometimes the writing is like that. Sometimes all the ideas are there right in front of you, and the words flow, and it is the best feeling in the world. And sometimes you don't know what to say, so you just sit there with your fingers hovering above the keyboard. You write a paragraph, and then you delete it immediately afterward. You bang your head against your computer screen, and you hate yourself because you know you have ideas, but you don't know the right context in which to place them. Such is the life of a writer, for better and for worse. I will offer some advice to anyone out there who wants to make videos like these, or to write essays or articles, or even to create novels and poetry, and that is to start writing immediately about the most fertile ideas popping into your mind, whatever they are. This may sound simple, and it is, but we worry too dang much about finding the perfect topic, and then we find it, and we don't have anything to say about it. And then there are other ideas that may sound crazy, and you may think you don't have a lot to say about them, but they pop into your head, and you have this inexplicable good feeling about them. And then you start writing, and you find out you have a lot more to say than you anticipated, and it is wondrous. 
So if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce even more fecund content. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that bounteous stuff. Adios, comrades!